And this morning from Joshua chapter 24, then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. This is the word of God for the people of God. We start a new series for the month of August. Faith Heroes is what we're going to be talking about as we continue to work our way through the Hebrew Scriptures this year. This morning we turn to the book of Joshua. Who was Joshua? Just a quick reminder, he was the key leader that followed Moses. Moses was the leader that God had lifted up to lead the people out of slavery, out of Egypt on this 40-year exodus as they come very near to the end of this journey. Moses passes away. He's not going to be the one that leads them into the promised land. They need a new leader The new designated leader of the Lord or of Yahweh is Joshua. He's been Moses' assistant, but now it's his turn to take the mantle of leadership and be the one who leads the people into the promised land. He's going to lead them on this final leg of their journey where God's promises and provisions will be fulfilled for the people of Israel. There's only one slight problem. There's already people living there. So what to do? If you just read through the book of Joshua, it sounds like these Israelites came in and kind of conquered and pillaged everyone. But the archaeologists who study this say there's no evidence for that. There's no evidence for a mass entry or a huge change of culture and conquering. The evidence suggests that many of the people who became part of the Hebrew people, never went to Egypt. They had continued to live in the land. And when their relatives who had been gone to Egypt finally returned, the evidence suggests that people who were serfs and slaves, just like these people who had been on the Exodus, rejoined these folks who are coming in, mostly in the rural areas that were largely unoccupied in the hill country, as some scholars say. These serfs and slaves from the cities, there were a few walled cities at that time. Some of them come and join those new immigrants who are entering the land. One scholar put it like this, far then from being a nomadic people encountering civilization for the first time, most of the Hebrews were people who left the urbanized Canaanite environment for a more rural life when the Israelite immigrants from Egypt joined their relatives who were already living there. By the time we get to chapter 24 in the book of Joshua, Lots of things have happened, battles and skirmishes and struggles, but the people are settling in. But by this time, Joshua is a much older man. He can see the end of his life is coming. He calls the people together to remind them once again of God's faithfulness and the necessity for them to be faithful or to remain faithful. So chapter 24 starts out, then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel. He's inviting everyone to come together. It highlights the importance of faith communities, of what it means for people to gather together, to worship, to serve, for fellowship, for us to come and be a part of the faith community. It highlights the importance of having leaders and mentors and people to play different roles within the life of the community so that the community and all within it might thrive. It's a key part as you read through the Scriptures over and over that is highlighted that community is a vitally important part of each of our faith journeys. I got an email recently 
from my home church. I grew up just south of here in First United Methodist Church of Okmulgee. They were writing to tell me that another person out of that congregation had responded to the call of God in their lives and were entering into the track to go on to be an ordained United Methodist pastor. Now, this is a relatively small church. I'm not the only pastor who's come out of there, or me and this new person. In fact, in the last few decades, at least eight, maybe more people who have been a part of that church have entered into ordained ministry. It's a remarkable thing to watch how that particular church is able to nurture people as they grow in faith, help them mature, and help them identify or discern the call of God on their lives to become a leader in the United Methodist Church. It demonstrates the importance of a supportive community, one that looks at all the individuals in the church and encourages them nourishes their faith through worship and fellowship and teaching that people can come together and worship there and then discern this call. Certainly, that was my experience. My grandparents were in that church. My parents were there. From the time I was born, I was being taken to First Church in Okmulgee. But it wasn't just my family. It was Sunday school teachers and Bible school leaders and then youth leaders, and youth sponsors, and then camp leaders. And then by the time I was a teenager, pastors giving me opportunity after opportunity to participate in leading worship, to read a psalm, or to say a prayer, eventually to preach to the congregation, were people all around me beginning to say to me, before I ever got out of high school, you have gifts for ministry. I think God might be calling you into the ministry. I think you could be a good leader for the Methodist church. I didn't discern the call all by myself. It happened within the community. The people that made up that church were a part of surrounding me with the community of love and forgiveness, as we say in our baptismal covenant, so that I might walk in the way that leads to life. We commit that and remind ourselves that that is who we are over and over every time we baptize a child in this church or any other Methodist church. Joshua is calling the people to gather. He wants to remind them of who God is and who they worship, and what God has done. If you read beyond where we read this morning in that 24th chapter, he goes all the way back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and begins to recount how God has called leaders and called them together. And then out out of the promised land, they go to Egypt because of a famine, and then how they become enslaved. But that how God did not forget them, And God calls Moses to lead them and to help the people go free and then to lead them on this 40-year journey of living as nomads in the wilderness and all the way up to his time, to Joshua's time. He reminds them that God is with them and that God delivered them not only from Egypt but into the promised land, into a place of provision and freedom that their God cares about them, that their God has been blessing them all along the way. My Wesley Study Bible that I read out of every week in the introduction to Joshua, it says Joshua is telling the story of how the people of Israel are constituted by choosing the God who had already chosen them. You realize God is choosing you. God is calling you. Joshua reminds the people of their identity as God's chosen people. And in gathering them together, he strengthens their faith and sets them once again on the right path to be the people of God. 
whom do you gather with? Well, on Sunday morning, you gather with this group, so great, we are the people of God. It could also be important to reflect on where you spend your time during the week. Are they reminding you of your chosenness? Are they reminding you of your goodness and of your faithfulness? Are they increasing your joy and your love? Are they helping you develop a deeper sensitivity for the care of others? Are they strengthening you in your Christian walk? Are they helping you be ever more shaped and formed into the image and likeness of Christ? What do they have you doing? Where do they have you going? What are the topics of conversation? Are they ones that build faith and pour goodness into the world? Or are they something else? With whom you associate surely makes a difference in the quality and the trajectory of your life. Chapter 24 says, Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel together, and they presented themselves before God. They presented themselves before God. They gathered together, but they knew why, and it was to focus and to offer themselves to their Creator, to their God. They presented themselves. They responded to the call of God on their lives, and then they came together in a visible, physical way to be the people of God. Bless you for doing the same. When we come together on a Sunday morning to worship, we're in a physical or visible form, the body of Christ, gathered together to offer ourselves to God, to come and give ourselves, open our hearts and minds to God's influence, to shape and form us, to call us, to bless us, to send us out to be God's people. Jesus called disciples. Jesus called people together. People from all walks of life, He called them together to be the people of God. Jesus calls us today. Are you listening for God's call upon your life? Because the good news, if you can hear it, is that God is choosing you and you and you. God is calling us together, together to be the people of God. And when we respond, that's exactly who we are. We're the people of God. We're the community of faith. We're the body of Christ alive in the world. Oh, we come as individuals, but we're a part of a greater entity when we are here than just individual selves. We are the body of Christ called by God to be here. The Apostle Paul wrote a lot of letters to the early Christians. In the one we call 1 Corinthians, he writes about the body of Christ and says we are members one of another. That we're not just individuals, we're like cells in a body or body parts in a body. That we are connected to each other in deep and meaningful ways that make it able for God to work in ways that God otherwise could not do through one of us as an individual, but can do through all of us as the body of Christ. So when Susan came down the aisle last week and joined, she made a commitment to God, but she also made a commitment to us. And when Doug did the same thing the week before, he made the same commitment. And when Janini came a couple of weeks before that, she made the same commitment to participate here fully through her prayers, her presence, her gifts, her service, and her witness. She made a commitment to God. Yeah, she also made a commitment to each of us. And if we are members here, 
We have made the same commitment. We live in a culture that makes it so easy to think we're just solo travelers on this journey. But that is not what the church teaches. That's not what the church is. That's not what the gospel says. It says we have fellow travelers. John Wesley talks about there's no holiness or Christian life except for social holiness. It's only when we are part of a group that we live the full Christian life. Paul says the same things in his letter to the early Christians. I hope we can hear it anew today. When you respond to God, oh, it's between you and God, but not only you and God. When you respond to Christ, you're responding to one another. You're saying you're throwing your lot in with all the rest of us. And we're only as strong as a body as each of us is willing to make our contribution and willing to participate fully and bring our gifts to bear on what God is doing through us. Oh, certainly responding to God grows faith in us, and coming to church strengthens our faith. But it also builds the body or builds the team that God is at work through Christ and the vehicle of the church to build so that God's love might be made known to one and all, to any in need, to all who are looking for help and hope. We are to be the body of Christ alive in the world. Joshua calls his people to gather, to remind them one more time who they are. They are God's chosen. They are the people of God. They are the community of faith. And he wants to remind them to stay on the journey. He knows he's not going to be with them forever. But he reminds them that God has been with them and God will continue to be with them forever. As you come forward this morning to receive the elements of communion, I hope you'll be listening for God because God is calling. May we respond, as did those folks in the passage here from Joshua 24, and present ourselves or offer ourselves in faith and loyalty so that we might be the people of God in Christ. May it be so. Amen. Thanks be to God.